going on as we hit back into the European Regional Swiss Round 1 here in Group A. And we're going to be starting it off with the Blue Zergy, who is in the top left side of the map. It is a laser. I had to do my own spin because Mapu is so far down the observer list, I couldn't find him in time. <laughs> Poor Mapu, he did a spin as well. I was on his, uh, I was on his camera, Mapu. I saw it. I did. I know you did it. Anyways, there's a photo right here in the top right hand corner of Ghost River. It's Geralt. Mapu hard at work. He's just not even giving him the camera time. Wow. Wow. It's okay. I found him now. I just, I was so used to earlier in the day there was like only us in the lobby, so I found him really early. Yeah. But obviously for Europe, all the other casters come on and they start joining the lobby, so. Then everyone's like, it's harder to find people, so I just had to go a bit further down the list, and I just wasn't wasn't ready mm. for it, wasn't expecting it, you know? You know, those other casters missed out. We had some fun games on the Asian region, for sure. <laughs> Definitely some fun StarCraft to start the day off with. Now we are on Europe, though, with a whole lot of best of threes to come, so don't go anywhere. We'll be live for basically the rest of the day, right? That's essentially what it comes down to. This is going to be a good old Protoss versus Zerg, though. A little surprised actually, Elazer allowed Ghost River to come through the vetoes. Not exactly sure how the pro gamers perceive some of these new maps, but I always kind of feel like Ghost River is a bit of a tricky map for Zerg. You have that very quick rush distance, especially for flying units. So units like an Oracle, like a Prism, can come across the map really quickly. I guess you get your Overlords in as well, but that doesn't really benefit the Zerg quite as much. I feel like the air-to-air -air rush distance is going to benefit Protoss a little bit more. And on top of that, there's just not a lot of bases. So you only have one third base option, for example. If Geralt somehow manages to delay that third base from Elazer, the game gets very messy very fast. The game gets very messy very fast, as we just have ourselves a couple of queens and overlords coming up. And get that uh, ready to rumble. And we just wait to see where we, uh, where we go, what we're going to do. Aprobi checks around. Obviously, PvZ is a very uh, plain matchup for the early stages, right? It's very rare something really kicks yep. off or anything crazy, although a Twilight oh, Council is quick. I mean, that's kind of Geralt, though, you know? He's not always the Stargate guy. He will mix up. He'll go even like DT's Archon drop sometimes when you don't expect him to. So, could be a little bit of an interesting factor as well. As we get this one on the go. Absolutely. Generally speaking, we do see that Stargate opener in this matchup because it's considered to be the best all-round build, but maybe because of the rush distance right here on Ghost River, you can get to your opponent's natural very quickly from your own natural, especially if you decide to knock down the rocks, although I don't think that's really an option. He decided to go for the good old Twilight Council instead. Now, if he wants to go for, for example, Glaives, he really needs to start it up. Yeah, it would be good to get it going ASAP. We'll see what he wants to do. He's got a lot of gas. If he gets the minerals, he might just get yeah. the Dark Shrine straight away. I can say that's not something that uh, we've seen Geralt wow. afraid to do in the past, but he just goes for the Robo straight away. So Robo first, and then the tech choice to be made after. I still think this is a, a DT Shrine. Yeah, it has to be. I don't think you really do anything else, but this is all a little suboptimal, it looks like. Well, maybe it's all right now, because he I... does spend, I guess, the next 250. Like, you're not really hinging, I guess, on that Robo facility so much. Yeah, I think the, the timing of this just works out. It might actually be a bit early yeah. of a prism just for the fact it's fairly close by air anyways. I mm. think uh, generally it's... Yeah, so it looks kind of sloppy to put down the robo facility with like 170 gas, but it probably lines up perfectly. Yeah, exactly. Specifically for this map. Well, a couple of things. I'm going to fight that Adept. Dark Shrine about halfway done. The robo finishes up. A couple more gates coming through. The lair is building a couple Very of quick lair. Away. Yeah, the lair is super Yeah, quickly. very quick lair, and no third. So this is all all a little bit funky. Laser opening up with two base Zerg, which rarely happens in modern day StarCraft. He decides to start mining out some of these mineral fields too. So with the lair, he should be able to produce a very quick, of, uh, I was going to say observer, but overseer would be an even better choice. Difficult to uh, <laughs> get one of those observers going here as Zerg, but he should be able to go road speed pretty easily too. I, I think he's all right defending this, and that's going to make this game a little bit awkward here for Geralt, because unless he's in his opponent's face right now before the lair finishes up, I don't think the Dark Templar are going to be able to achieve too much. Yeah, no, I'm kind of uh, I'm kind of with you as these uh, few adepts kind of move forward a little bit. The fact that it's just going to be an Overseer soon enough is, is just going to be a huge factor, and a laser is looking to be very safe playing two base Roach to get set up and to push himself into, like I said, just a very safe opening, and just very difficult for the pros to then do anything against this early on. All right, so already goes River. This is why I was a little surprised we saw it. 
Ghost River apparently is delivering here and changing up the way that the game is usually being played. We have a couple of depths in the main base, a couple of depths in the natural too, just trying to be annoying. And now finally the Dark Templar come up. We do have an Overseer morphing in. I think the Prism yeah, it certainly got spotted there and he saw a bunch of invisible units being warped in. How do you see invisible units? I don't know, dude. It's one of the secrets that Zerk players will not share. He just he just knows, man. He, he can see them yeah. because he just believes in that they are so much. <laughs> As the laser send it, by the way, he has mined out minerals to access the other side of the map. Then his army, I assume, is going to knock down the rocks on this side. And that's our play. This is it. I mean, obviously, the Robo being up now gives you access to Immortals with the Robo Bay finishing. Maybe even a Disruptor comes up quickly here to try and be part of this defense. But the laser absolutely utilizing the map from the very get-go. Showing us just how short a rush distance this can be, and here we go. We are at the front door of the Protoss player, as Geralt have enough to hold on. The first set of battles don't do much, but they weren't really positioned to do anything else anyway, so not too big of a deal, as now we start to work against that wall off, and Laser's done a great job of getting all of his units within reach of this wall, making sure everything has a chance of firing. These new maps are really delivering, Wardy. We see a lot of creativity right here as both players decide to go for different builds than what we normally see in the current meta of StarCraft II. The Overseer gets a couple of transfusions, desperately needs it as well, because of course there is still that Dark Shrine down, but I think the Ravager Queen count here is overwhelming. We do have a Disruptor popping out. Okay, grabs only two, I think. Ravager's there in the end, which really isn't that amazing. Sometimes we see an entire uh, bulk of Zerk going down, and I think ultimately, that was do or die, right? There is going to be a second uh, Disruptor coming up in just a moment. First one should have a Nova available once again. Robo Facility itself, though, ends up going down. And I think with that, this game is going to get harder and harder for Eli or for Geralt, rather, with the laser overwhelming the Protoss here. Yeah, hard to really imagine, especially when the wall off is down, right? Because so much of the Protoss defense relies on being able to choke up the opponent and stop what can access but with no wall off here like that just feels impossible that was a heck of a disruptor shot it reached and it took three uh, ravages down and was not really expecting that i mean Geralt has to work with just what he's got right now but he's making the most of it the problem is again units can just flood through as they wish there's really no stopping them and that is going to be the problem at the end of the day that there's just going to be yeah. so much zerg that keeps on arriving one problem here that the laser is running into is that he's used i think with this push to have a third hatch he hasn't had a third hatch, so he doesn't have that much larva. He's actually got a lot of money in the bank. He's been remaxing here or reinforcing this, I guess, with tons of Zerklings, but Zerklings take up a lot of your larva production. So he's got quite a bit of money here saved away. Okay, now Roaches are coming up. He's going to be forced to go back home, but I think he's still Geralt that is in a world of trouble because those Roaches are very likely to just all turn into Ravagers and then suddenly that money from Elazer is going to start disappearing. But for now, Geralt is holding and that's mostly because Elazer had a, a bit of a resource problem there. And the resource was not minerals, it wasn't gas, but it was the larva. Decides to go for a Spire? I think you just continue here with Ravagers. Yeah, honestly, you can, but at the same time, the Spire, there's no answer to it, right? So... You just get yeah. a bunch of muters up and you're very gas heavy right now in your bank. I don't or hate you do it. both, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why not just send both, I guess, yeah. I was going to say, the fact that right. Creepio is so rough for Geralt as well, like, you can't do anything oh, properly prison. as the prison goes down. And uh, even if he holds this wave off, the, the muters are death sentence, basically, at this stage, so. For sure. Ah. The queens do end up getting <laughs> popped, except for one of them somehow managed to survive where the others did not. The Ling Ravager ball here is already enough. And on the back of this, the Mutas are, well, only about a minute or so away from arriving on this side of the map, but I don't think Elazer is going to need it. Very aggressive game number one here. But I think ultimately, it can only be won by the Zerk. I think so too. Cool build. Just uh, seeing the new map in action being put to use right from the very get-go is obviously incredible to see. Uh, love that. And with that, we're going to be heading into a game number two with a laser on that 1-0 advantage. And... Uh, yeah, I do think this is a matchup where Geralt has a shot, but it's definitely a kind of an outward shot, so I guess we'll see what happens yeah. heading into a game two and see if he can make that shot, because he clearly came in with like a bit of a different build. Like I say, to me, that's something that Geralt still does, but it's not the kind of the day-in and day-out norm. And I actually think it's not a terrible build necessarily against a lot of the Zerg pushes, because if the Zerg's going to get super aggro and you have DTs, usually that's a defense. It's because the laser's yeah. build was too based lair that it actually ran into the brick wall. Like, it was probably the worst build he could have fought against because he's aggressive, which you are meant to stop with the DTs, but with detection, that's not meant to be there with Zerg aggression that early. So, yeah, made that a little no. bit of a funky one. 
Yeah, you're absolutely right. So the reason Geralt, I think, went for that build is because of the size of the map. And then he ended up hitting a bit of a brick wall because he laser also, because of that same reason, decided to go and play a two-base Zerk opener, which is very strange. So playing Dark Templar against a two-base Zerk with a very quick lair, it's just an unfortunate circumstance, right? Like he saw, so he tried delaying his opponent's third base. And he managed to successfully do it to a point where he laser decided, I'm not going to even make the third base anymore. There's that weird moment where you kind of want your opponent to take the third base because that makes the build for the protos work way better. But you don't really want them to take it when they wanted it to, right? So it's one of those funky situations where ultimately it's almost like a game of rock, paper, scissors there. Obviously, you're trying to play it as strategic as possible, but yeah, the Dark Templar tech just did very, very little. Very little indeed as we get ourselves set up to rumble into the next one. Ready, GLHF, we get this set to go. Geralt and the laser are going to be playing here on Oceanborn. And uh, we'll see if Geralt can indeed take a map back ahead of all the rest of the matches we got coming up. Uh, actually, amazingly, this is after this series, halfway through our day, by the way, guys. So uh, hmm. it's been kind of flying by. Uh, I feel like we've got some less breaks than last time and stuff. And we're yeah, just zooming through games. So hope you're all having fun. This is the ESL Spring Regionals. I'm going to go back into the laser versus Geralt right about now. Game number two. On the bottom right hand side, I'm just uh, I'm just doing my map you check if I go awkwardly silent at the start of the game. <laughs> In the bottom right side, our blue Zerg from Team Liquid, it is a laser. And in the top left hand corner, our Protos, it's Geralt. On a more conventional map this time around, it's going to be Oceanborn. Loving a new map so far, though, especially if we have a little bit of variety as well throughout a series, right? So this is a, a pretty standard macro map. I guess there are some Queen Marches you can technically go for here. Used to be quite popular when the map was first introduced. Haven't seen it as much as of late. Apparently, Laser, though, a little concerned here for, well, some proxy shenanigans or maybe just a probe that could block it. Sent that drone real early, though. Yeah, he just wanted to know what was up. Hatch now goes down and, well... Geralt pops his gate in. I'm very intrigued to see what Geralt goes for game two, because obviously he was not playing the standard in game one. Obviously this is more of a standard map, so does that mean we just see the Stargate, we just play into the rest of this? I guess we will see. Absolutely. Probe is going to come across the map here relatively late, all things considered. It's not going to be able to achieve all too much, but it is at the very least, it is going to... Well, I guess confirm for Geralt that everything is quite normal. He would like to probably see the Zerg take a third base, though, this time around. Because it's funny, two base openers are... I think Protoss players have a bit of a love-hate relationship with it. It's, it's one of those things that you rarely play against because it's not considered to be that good. But then when you do play against it, it's one of those situations where it's also very difficult to figure out exactly what the correct response is, right? So it's a subpar build for, for Zerg at the highest level at the very least, but it at the same time also creates a lot more randomness at Protoss doesn't really enjoy playing against so much. Yep. Very, very true as our Cyber Court next its probe. All continue up just for the moment. We got ourselves a couple of queens on the way. The Lings, the Overlord, continue to come on by. And you just see another Ling popping around and the probe going to move from the main to the natural. Still scouting. Just wants to know exactly what is up throughout these early stages of the game. Twilight Council once again, Wardy. Interesting. So... I would say nine times out of 10 at the pro level. Right now in the current meta, we see Stargate openers. Oracle into a quick third Nexus is just so powerful. I thought Geralt decided to go for that build in the previous game, specifically because it was on the map Ghost River. I know he's a fan of this opener in general. He's been playing it for years, but to play it as well, twice in a row right here on Oceanborn. I mean, obviously there's a lot of variety too, right? This doesn't necessarily have to be once again, like, a Robo Facility together with a bunch of Dark Templar. Well, there goes the Robo Facility. It could be Dark Templar once again, too. It could indeed. That Robo is on its way up, so we'll see what his plan may be. I mean, maybe he just says, hey, look, you know what? I played the worst build possible last time. I actually like this build. Let's just send yeah. it a second time around. Let's just commit. I, I believe in it. I'm going to do it. We'll find out in a sec, because, I mean, as he goes past 100 gas, it pretty much confirms what we're going to be seeing. Mm -hmm. Could be Blink already. <laughs> Stop Blink right now. Crazy That's day. Wild. <laughs> blink and then you harass with like big. two two adepts on the robo while you get the Blink ready to go. Yeah, okay. That would be insane. Hey, if, if no, we're doing that, I, I think I, I could make better build orders. <laughs> yeah, I, I I think you just make Zerklings at that point and you'd be totally fine as a Zerk yeah, player. It. But it could feeling. technically be something else. I agree. So he's going to go for like a three minute and... 
yeah, maybe 50 second-ish, maybe a little bit later than that, the third Nexus, which really does look like a Stargate opener. So Elaser is scouting around here. And this, this all looks like a Stargate opener. You expect the Oracle to arrive on your side of the map right about right now. The only problem is that there is no Stargate, and technically this third Nexus is pretty risky. But I don't think Elaser can really punish it anymore. There's not a whole lot he can do. If he starts up making mass Zerkling right now, I think he will fall against a bunch of DTs. So, nice little mind game right there by Geralt. Does end up getting the third Nexus down very early, considering this is a DT opener. Absolutely. Let's just have our dog trying. About to finish up the Nexus, the Stalker, all building into play. Roach and the Spores are coming up on the side of Elaser, and we just wait for... I mean, him to get the units out of defend, which is going to happen, right? The prison's not even across the map just yet. The stalk will go after the Orbi. The scout is good. And we're just going to have ourselves the opportunity now to just say, hey, well, you know what? This is our moment to kind of go and uh, just send it onto the other side. And I think Elaine's going to be ready, and that's going to be a sad time for Geralt. Yeah, that being said, though, Geralt does have that nice economy on the back of it, right? So already he's leading as far as the work account goes, and he goes straight into a Robo Bay as well. All right, Geralt is cooking up some, some fascinating StarCraft over here. Not going for the Oracles, but still finding himself with a quick third Nexus. Not really rushing out the damage here either, but still maneuvering around the map as if he will. Ultimately, just threatening that you're able to do damage may actually already deal damage, if that makes any sense. Like... Elazer has been very much so respecting the potential for his opponent to deal a lot of damage on the other side of the map, but up to this point, Geralt has been playing this pretty passively. Like, technically speaking, Elazer could be sitting at 75 drones right now and he could be cruising, but instead, he's been, uh, yeah, he's been respecting his opponent enough here to not just hold down the drone button. Yep, absolutely. As our queens get over there, Prism just gonna get chased away. The few depths still in the bottom right. And start shading around as the light comes up. The drones are building. More overlords and a roach continue to produce. And get those queens moving out down the low ground. Still a prism on the bottom side, trying to have a look around, trying to see what is going on. Oh, he gets the council, the fourth hatch. Okay, that's nice. Yeah, that's What's actually not bad. Yeah, that's really quite nice here. He's he's going for a speed prism with disruptors on the back of this too, with a lot of blink stalkers. So what a fascinating build here, right right now by Geralt. Uh, I don't think you can really do this kind of this type of build multiple times in a series. I mean, I guess this is technically the second time him doing it, but I think if he does it again, say he wins this game, he does it again in game number three, I think Elaser can shut it down pretty hard. But game number one was so wild that Geralt decided to bring it back again. He didn't really get to show his like full plan, I suppose, but I'm, I'm really liking this here for Geralt. Yeah, I'm, I'm into it, man. This uh, prison speed still coming up, plus one attack and blink continue through. So we get all of that on the go. So the prism here is going to take a few more shots. The TT is going to get active and the queens will help to push it away. I mean, anything you can do just slow down and make use of your DTs. Interesting that he keeps them as DTs, right? Rather than being like, hey, let's get the Archons going or anything along that line. Because usually yeah. that's the line of thinking. You get the Archons out, you start trading. Daryl yeah, believes in leaving these couple of DTs. Usually, I guess, with Archons, you want to go up to four DTs. So you have, you know, two Archons. That there might be this go. moment now after he tries to get this cancel. He's trying to go for another council right now. We do have a bunch of adepts, not target firing down the drones, but he is going to get the kill, not a council, but a kill on another hatchery. And really, now finally is when we shoot. Ooh, where's the prism? Hello. I was going to say we should see the disruptor drops. That would be a massive blunder, losing those units for free. Where was the prism? You guys were supposed was, to be inside yeah. of that plane. It was on the right side with the DT slash Archons, right? So yeah, he finished just... Graphitic Drive, by the way, like a minute ago. It's been it's been a while. Yeah, been a hot second and setting up. And a laser is uh, 65 drones, obviously no fourth base. means it's not really worth going a bit beyond that just yet. He's on his way to that lurker den, but I'm not sure he's really got the economy to kind of boom into those lurkers like he wants to, especially with this amount of disruptors already up and available. The first wave of lurkers is not going to be an unmanageable kind of situation on the side of the Protoss, so might be a factor. Hmm. It's a very strange build right here from Geralt, and he's not really achieving anything with his damage. But at the same time, he's also managed to get himself ahead economically every single time, which makes this very cool. Now, Ooh. this oh, could have been an issue. I was going to say it's an, it, no, it's not an issue. <laughs> that was really close. Absolutely clutch that was as uh, Ling's even backed off for a second before they went for it. They might have made the difference. Hey, these Archons, though, they're getting active, so finally the Archon drop comes through. It is going to deliver a few drones Lovely. already, and we're going to get even more. Geralt is just farming over here. You need to see how well this game is going in the supply as well, because he is up 20 supply when you really shouldn't be as a Protoss player. This is a laser. Losing that fourth base a couple times over has absolutely just crippled him throughout this game so far, and now 
he's struggling to get back on his feet. Yeah, it's going to be, I guess, Lurker drops right now for Elazer, and that is... I'm saying it a little hesitantly because it's such a weird thing to do, and it feels like almost like a desperation move. I think Elazer is reading this game correctly. Everything's been going really well here for the Protals, who's all the way up to 87 probes, by the way, which is a ton. He's adding on additional gateways. He's going to go all the way up to 10. He's going into the Templar Archives, too, so he's ready to start really piling on the pressure and just warp in unit after unit after unit. That Prism has got the speed boost, so he says goodbye as he zaps into the main base. Well, he gets shot down. This push already from Geralt is looking good with the Disruptors available, like I said before. The first round of Lurkers does not seem that scary because he can kind of blast through them. They don't even have their range upgrade yet. For the moment, Geralt will get halted, but he's got so much money to spend. 1,400, 1,400. He spends 800 minerals on Zealots. Started a second robo facility. He's just got the Temple Archives to potentially upgrade Storm from as well. I mean, the, the options to spend his money are there. He just needs to get around to spending it. So he decides to double down on Robotech, which is a bit interesting. I feel like a lot of Protoss right now would take this as an opportunity where they have the Zerg pinned back to go into Skytals instead. But Geralt is saying, no, that's not what we're doing. In the meantime, though, Elazer may finally find a bit of an opportunity to put on a bit of pressure on the Protoss, because so far it's, been, it's just been defensive play for a long while. So he's, well, trying to do a Lurker drop, but there's already a, uh, a Photon Cannon there as a detector. But apparently this section over here is out of range, so we do have a couple of Novas connecting. Yep, Nova's getting through, delivering a little bit. We just have ourselves a Link still jumping onto Stalkers, chasing down Disruptors. Lings really will go, and they will pick off that Disruptor as well. That's seven probes going down, by the way, with the Lurker drop on the natural. I love that. A laser making something happen here to find some value, and he kind of needed to get something going, and that is going to help. So, <clears throat> I haven't liked the main engagements very much for Geralt. He's had a million and one gas in the bank for a while, but no real plan of spending it. And then he took the gases over here up north, too. I kind of feel like most of the time when we see this mass gateway style, it's very aggressive with loads of units being warped in and far less gas. Obviously, Archons are really nice here, and they basically counter every unit that Zerg currently has, but you're going to need a lot of warp-ins, and suddenly Elazer is knocking on the front door of the natural expansion. Geralt has looked really solid in the first section of this game, but suddenly, I mean, Elazer didn't take crippling amounts of damage. Suddenly, Elazer is all over this. You give the man a, a, a finger, he will grab the entire hand. Elazer is starting to overwhelm. He is everywhere, and he's just started to play a little faster than Geralt can seemingly handle. Loved where Geralt was at, I feel like Geralt was in the better position. DT's not about to show up, though. We are going to need some detection in return. We are not getting it. That was just splash damage as we're actually going to reborrow these Lurgers, but they are just going to die. The DT's Sick. on the cleanup. Well, yeah, you kind of need detection, bro. The Dark Templar uh, putting in so much work that our Lurkers wanted to run, but they ran into a bunch of Stalkers. That exchange was actually not bad there for Geralt in the end, but there was no way he planned for that, right? Like, that was so sketchy for him. Recalls a bunch of units up north, grabs those Lurkers, okay. Whew, I think he can breathe again. That being said, though, no, Elazer has knocked the front door open. Is there a unit in the wall off in the natural expansion? There is not, and Lings are running in. Yep, again, it's Chaos that Elazer is looking to really pursue right now, because Chaos is where he can probably do the best with the least amount of units, and he did not really have much of a rebuild following that cleanup, so his supply is struggling and it is going to be a bigger fight on the other side of the map. We see the Zelts, the Archons, the Stork is pushing through the Lurkers. Initially do not do great, but then they start to hold their own. Now the units from the other side, we're going to re-engage through this, and it looks as though we are good to go play cleanup as the Archons, though, still have to walk a long way through Lurker shots to get there. And it's actually yeah. going to be good enough for now for a laser to survive this. Trying to catch these few Archons. We are going to get the kill on everything. So Geralt gets completely wiped himself. And a laser will very much so stay alive. <laughs> wow. Yeah, these are very close battles. Like, ultimately, that was Elazer holding there, but it's one of those situations where if you if you run that simulation a dozen times, right, like, there's a good chance that Zerk will actually get overwhelmed a couple of times. You really need those Lurker shots to line up properly, and I guess luckily for Elazer, most of that fight took place on Creep. Yeah, a lot of those Archons, they really came from, from way in the back, right? Technically speaking, I think the number of units that Geralt had right there was enough, but they just came in from so far, and then the reinforcing Zerklings allowed Elazer to stabilize. Geralt, by the way, still with a 10 worker advantage at this point. Yep, up 10 workers, gonna be seeing these few Hydras fighting away. We've got the Lurkers looking good, then. This is, this is amazing. Yeah. Just the positions, and the problem is the Archons can't really fight well against Lurkers because they just gotta walk so far before they can shoot them, so they take too much damage in that process. 
And now a laser is once again pinging back across the map and looking good. A Ling Drop is getting chased away and will go down without much else happening, but we've denied the fifth base, and these lurkers might just go again. The secret this time might be just having detection in case DTs try and clean them up. If we have that, <laughs> we might be golden. Having vision indeed is very handy. Now, so far, he doesn't have it for this particular army just yet. There are, however, so many lurkers. Disruptors are coming. There is an overseer as well. Disruptors are really the only ground unit that feels good in this instance. I mean, technically, Geralt could pull the switch and decide to just go and, and fight this with his Arc on Immortal Ball, but it would be so risky. Those lurkers have so much hit points. You do need a second Nova as well to shut all of it down. Elazer is inviting him in, but ultimately he decides to start knocking here with the Zerklings and the Hydras. Maybe a little overzealous, but now that fourth Nexus is in a world of trouble as well. It's gonna fall. And with that, I think that Geralt has to commit to an all-in. Problem is, he's got a ground-based army against, well, one of the best anti-ground units in the game. I guess Disruptors are decent, but when the Lurkers are this spread out, for example, good luck trying to kill them. Yeah, and they even just dodge away from that shot as well. Uh, I was honestly thinking, like, I was with you with that overzealous kind of engage with the Ling Hydra, but he knocked down a Disruptor with it and then got an arc on too. I was like, man, he actually got tech units, only lost Ling, so even that wasn't so bad. He'll fight out down to the south from this position. It's just going to be a couple of Zealots and Stalkers still getting cleaned up. As Geralt is just bleeding units. And of course, now Geralt has this issue of, hey, I've got a bunch of pros, but I can't even really use them. He walks into the Lurk, he's not expecting them to still be there. That means he can disrupt her towards them, but he doesn't even get a kill. Just one connection on one of the Lurkers is not exactly going to get it done. The one thing I would love to see from Elazer right now is like a Viper or two. Abducting those disruptors. I mean, without the disruptors, this army of the Protoss is absolute toast. And he fires up four of them. Thank you very much, Elazer, for making me look smart. Appreciate that. Um, he's going to morph the lurkers now and just move them ever so slightly forward. Ah, this is tough. Elazer is starting to overwhelm the natural a second time as well. Again, diving very deep, but he realizes <laughs> that the Protoss' economy has been nowhere to be seen for a while. We had a lot of dead units there covering our camera for just a moment. Better overcharge helping out, but I don't think there's enough. Well, I, I think they hit us in the face, man. We <laughs> got a little bit of a yeah. jump scare. As you knock down a disruptor, <laughs> we knock down the rest of these immortals. And you're right, I don't think this is going to be enough at all from Geralt. This has been a little bit of a while coming. I feel like he's been unable to really answer this force of a laser for a couple of minutes. But again, he's had his moments in this series. Mm -hmm. I feel like Geralt missed the opportunity to tie this one up.